And welcome to Houston Newsmakers. And good morning to Congressman Kevin Brady, representing the 8th Congressional District. It's been too long. It has, Kevin. Well, thanks for having me. We back. always talk about you getting here regularly. we got to get back on our... Uh -huh pattern because yes. it's always nice to have you here yes. he's going to be here for the first two segments and a newsmakers extra that you'll be able to see online thank you for that you're welcome before we get into the local priorities let's talk about the big picture that's been dominating the landscape here that has been back in april when the Mueller report was released uh, it was a chance to read about uh, what led to the indictments against 34 individuals three russian companies seven guilty pleas including five from among the trump campaign team and the conclusion, there was no concerted effort or coordination with Russians to skew the election results. But Special Counsel Mueller left no doubt this week when he spoke for the first time that there was definite effort by the Russians against Hillary Clinton. As alleged by the grand jury in an indictment, Russian intelligence officers who were part of the Russian military launched a concerted attack on our political system. The indictment alleges that they used sophisticated cyber techniques to hack into computers and networks used by the Clinton campaign. Now, he said a lot more on that, so we know that there was Russian yeah. interference. The question is, what's being done about it? Because it seems to me there's deafening <clears throat> silence about some concerted effort to make yeah. sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, I think yeah. the good news is about the report, the Russians did meddle, and they tried to uh, draw Americans uh, into that uh, election effort, not a single American. Uh, would work with them. <clears throat> That's why the conclusion of the report is there was no uh, conclusion uh, or no collusion, excuse me. Um, uh, I think he was pretty clear in the report about no evidence of obstruction. But I think at the heart of the matter is why wasn't more done to stop that meddling and are we doing that uh, today? And secondly, they're still left unanswered is the, ori the origin of this whole Trump uh, Russia narrative. Uh, I think it was important for the Attorney General to point a very respected uh, prosecutor um, uh, from the Northeast uh, to investigate, did our government, through its intelligence and law enforcement agencies, um, spy on presidential campaigns, attempt to influence the election? Uh, did they create this narrative or allow it to go forward? And so I think there's still more uh, to be done there. But I think the key here, my view, is that, look, at some point, you know, those who don't support the president have to understand, have to accept the consequences, the outcomes of the 2016 election. And it's time to accept the fact there was no collusion. And the question now for Democrats is, are they just going to keep investigating? Are they going to start legislating, working with us? Okay, so you went a long way uh, on me on that. I just thought we were going to talk about <laughs> putting something in place yeah, about yeah. making sure there's no interference again. That's yeah. what I want to talk about. Yeah, that no, other stuff, yeah. with all due respect, is political stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the key um, to, to that key question is, the answer is yes. I know both uh, at the state level, at the federal level, um, and to... Uh, to interfere uh, uh, in a cyber way in the Florida elections. Mm. Here in Texas, we have to make sure we've got those safeguards in place. Love to see that higher up on the spectrum so that we yeah, can talk about no, that more. No doubt. Backing up just a little bit, um, collusion and conspiracy, two different things. Uh, special counsel did talk about the fact, in the book, which I've read, how much have you read? Yeah, have you read the lot. whole thing? A lot yes. of it. We know that there was some uh, acceptance of help from the Russians, actually looking forward to more from the Russians. It didn't happen because of whatever, but there was some, uh, yes, desire to accept that help that was there. No conspiracy, not insufficient evidence, not no evidence, but insufficient evidence of a conspiracy. So Mueller has declared that. The obstruction piece, altogether different scenario in saying that, in fact, the the special counsel Mueller, uh, Ray, we have this other soundbite ready, talked about the investigation, obstruction of justice. Let's hear what he had to say about that. And as set forth in the report, after that investigation, if we had had confidence that the president clearly did not commit a crime, we would have said so. So we're not totally out of woods with that yet. I get what you're saying. Yeah, I know so, the political spin, yeah. which is important. I think it's important. It, it isn't disagree. just political spin. So I read the transcript. I was in Corpus Christi yesterday working on right. the new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, the new port widening there. And so I read the transcript of, uh, of Mr. Mueller, but I also read the report. And he was pretty clear that if there had been evidence right. of obstruction, he would have brought that forward. Uh, in a very clear way, definitive way, he didn't, uh, just as he made the case that no American included with 
he, Russia. He said and if so, there was evidence that he did not. So yeah. that's a little different than saying if he because he, he laid out scenarios within his report. It's just you decide. He's, yeah. He didn't make any criminal adjustment on that. So yeah. I, well, I'll just tell you, special prosecutor. The heart of it was there collusion. No. Uh, was there evidence of obstruction? Conspiracy. In my view, no. Uh, and so look, I think um, uh, he did a great part uh, of his work. I still think what he left unanswered was. Did our law enforcement intelligence agencies, you know, interfere, uh, spy, uh, try to you impact? You really think the, that that is a possibility? I it, mean, the it, way, the, it, regrettably, it could be, and that's what worries me the most. Because if you've got the government trying to influence elections, you've really undermined our democratic process. And so that's why I think Attorney General Barr uh, appointing um, uh, Mr. Durham, who served under six presidents, to go to the heart of that. Not in a, as a special prosecutor, just as a you know, career prosecutor, get to the facts. I think that'll be an important one. We're going to talk more about that on Newsmakers Extra. I want to make sure that we talk about some of the things. We have this political divide that really is evident, just part of our it conversation is. There's no here. Question. How do you get through that and talk about some of the things that your committee is working on now that is bipartisan, that is making progress? Right. So uh, a couple things. One, my view is... Um, Look, when you're in the minority uh, or the majority, you wake up every day uh, working hard to stop bad ideas in Washington. There are plenty of them. But you work equally hard to find common ground. I think in the Ways and Means Committee, we've always uh, had that view, at least among our Republicans. And so uh, while we disagree on things like the Trump tax returns or Medicare for all, where we are working together is on um, cracking down on overpriced drugs, mm -hmm. uh, trying to stop surprise billings. Uh, we're we're uh, continuing an investigation I launched as chairman about the moms who are dying in childbirth in America. It has grown worse over three decades. We've got to work together in that area. And then also on retirement and savings, there's areas here that we can work together and are. You know, I want to talk more in detail about that. Um, and we're going to do that after the break here. We're going to talk about a bill that I saw. I was shocked. Passed the House by 417 to 3 vote. That was impressive. It's a good, that's, 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 a, a, that's bipartisan. That's a good one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're going to talk about what's happening to the billions of dollars that's expected to come to Texas for disaster relief after Harvey. It's slowing down a little bit because of politics. It may just be just a little sidetrack here. We're going to talk more about that right after this break. 20 million Americans have it. Are you one of them? From weight changes to feeling restless, the six signs to watch out for when it comes to a thyroid problem. Hurricane season is here. I'll show you how you can get flood insurance with no weight Monday on Channel 2 News Today. You never know when you might need a quick loan. That's when it's good to have the Speedy Cash app. You can apply for a loan 24-7 from any device. Download the Speedy Cash app today or visit us at speedycash.com. Love that Speedy Cash. You take the wheel. I'll find the deals. Big savings are still happening at NTB. Right now, buy two tires, get two free when you purchase our value installation package. Plus, use your store credit card to get a $75 mail-in rebate and pay no interest for 12 months. Save on top brands like Goodyear, Continental, Cooper, Nitto, and more. Buy two tires, get two free, plus a $75 rebate. Also, take advantage of our $19.99 oil change at NTB. That's all you need. This summer, explore Texas wetlands at the Houston Zoo. See bald eagles, whooping cranes, and American alligators, and help save them in Texas. Together, we are saving Texas wildlife. Texas now, Texas forever. Life is about making every moment count. Hey, Google. Turn on the outside lights. That's why Reliant offers connected devices that transform your world and plans that help you save. That's life. Switch on. Reliant. You never know when you might need a quick loan. That's when it's good to have the Speedy Cash app. Apply today from any device and have cash in your account as soon as tomorrow. Download the Speedy Cash app today or visit us at speedycash.com. Love that Speedy Cash. We are KPRC Channel 2 Investigates, the largest, most relentless team of investigators in Houston. Got something for Channel 2 Investigates to check out? Here's how to reach us. Welcome back to Houston Newsmakers. My very special guest is Republican Congressman Kevin Brady. We've been talking about potential progress being made 
despite the climate of political divisiveness. And the SECURE Act is one of the examples of that. Tell people, what, what is the SECURE Act? How did that come about? Yeah, so after we passed tax reforms, local businesses had more money in their pocket. Families did as well. But what we recognize is we're not a nation of savers. And we need to be, and we need to make it easier for families to save more and earlier throughout their lifetime, whether for health care or retirement or, or education. So last session, as chairman, uh, we passed retirement security bills, first really rewrite of that in decades, didn't quite make the president. To his credit, the new chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Rich Neal from Massachusetts, and I picked up that legislation, made some adjustments, you know, priorities for Mr. Neal, and passed that, took that to the House floor last week, almost unanimously, major reforms really helps people save, and even helps older Americans who now can keep saving through their lifetime, and at 70 and a half, you won't have to take savings mm -hmm. out and spend it when you don't want to. We're raising that age to 72, and we hope to get rid of it completely. So with that kind of passage in the House, it's just not going to be a problem in the Senate? No, it shouldn't be, and we've worked with Senate Democrats and Republicans for several years in this area. We should be working together on helping people save. This is an area both parties feel strongly about. Do you think you and Mr. Neal are setting an example about how bipartisanship can work even when you are disagreeing on a lot of different things? Well, I don't know. I've, I've worked with, with Rich Neal a long time. I have a great deal of respect for him. His word has always been good uh, for me. And so we, while we do fight things out pretty hard, we also are looking for common ground. And, and that's just how our committee tries to work. Mm -hmm. We just think that's important. One of the things that you've been vocal about is the need to get into place something that will replace the North American Free yeah. Trading. But talk about <clears throat> what your concern is. I know that over a period of time there's been negotiations that have been going, going on and the president wants to see this happen. Why is it not signed into position? Yeah, so it has to come to Congress. Here's the good news. Uh, our, our trading relationship with Mexico and Canada has been hugely important for states like Texas. We sell more than 100 20 billion dollars of made in Texas products to Mexico and Canada and growing. Uh, but the agreement was outdated. The president renegotiated. It is better in many ways than the existing NAFTA. And so now uh, Congress has to approve it. And so we are working with and helping lead the effort to pass it in the House. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working Democrats and Republicans together uh, on that. And we're making the case that for the U.S., it means 176,000 more jobs. For Texas, no one has more to gain from the new agreement. No one has more to lose if it isn't approved. Mm -hmm. So we're uh, covering, uh, really traveling the state, building bipartisan support for the new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. Uh, last week, as the House was in recess, a uh, $19.1 billion disaster a relief bill was up for a vote. The Senate had already passed it 85 to 8. Texas Republican Congressman Chip Roy objected. That was enough to hold it up yeah. because of the procedural rules there. Uh, he also objected to the lack of funding for border issues, and he talked about that when he stood up. To talk. It wasn't just about the fact that there weren't people in the yeah. House to vote on it. He threw that about the border thing as well. What does it mean to Texans waiting for disaster relief? Is so this going to get done? Yeah, it will get done. And it's really for the central Texas flooding that we saw. I think, Cambrell, one thing that worries me over the last several years, the disaster funding has become a political football. I know that after uh, hurricanes, Michael and others, uh, the California wildfires, I know uh, I led several bills to provide disaster tax relief. And then we passed a disaster relief bill last year, but it was on party line votes. The bill this year, party line votes. We need to get back to working together on all the disasters. That would relief. seem simple. I mean, it that seems to me really important. Yeah, that, and obvious. That a community needs it. Is it because people want to tack things onto it? Yeah, that's always the case. You know, there's a disaster and then all the add ons people want to add. That's what tends to make it controversial. I think Chip Roy's point was look, this is $19 billion. Congress, that's a lot of money. Congress really ought to put a yes or a no uh, on the board for that. I think he makes an important point. But at the end of the day, uh, whether you're in California, Florida, uh, the Southeast Conference states, you know, yeah. or, or, or Texas, central flooding, you know, we need to get the, that help. Yeah, but just slowing down, it's going to get done, you think? It will get okay. done. We're, it, it is, I think, uh, more than a year late. 
uh, and we've got to we got to knock this stuff off. Let's talk about immigration security. What's your solution to improving border security? Right yeah, now? so I think you got to shut the back door of illegal immigration so you can keep open the front door of legal immigration. Mm -hmm. Texas is a state pretty proud of its legal immigration. Right. It's been a big part, is a big part of our region, but we've got to secure that border. And I think, one, you do need barriers, you do need technology, but you need some changes in laws because right now uh, you can't keep those families together for longer than 20 days, they need to be kept together. You can't, when their case uh, is invalid, uh, we have trouble returning them to their home countries. Our laws uh, prevent that, we should be able to do that. The other thing is, why don't we, for these families that are, that are being prosecuted or persecuted in their home country, why can't they apply for asylum from the home country, not take a 1,200 mile dangerous uh, trek uh, to the United States. Why can't we make it easier? President Trump has actually proposed just that. That should be an easy one for us to agree on. So your biggest priority as you head back to Washington next week, what's that going to be? Yeah, so I think uh, right now, uh, finishing out uh, this retirement security, the work we're doing on, on drug pricing, we're pulling back the curtain to see how drug prices are set you know, and, and manipulated uh, in the system. Uh, we're working to end surprise billing. Uh, something that Texas is a leader on, we need to do better, I think, from the federal level. Uh, and then, of course, we're always looking for solutions on immigration, the economy, and more workers. A lot on your plate. Not Here is, be, but there, not it's positive boring. things. Not going to be boring. No, sir. Not that you ever are. <laughs> <laughs> always good to see you, Andrew, Congressman. thank you, Appreciate sir. you so much. By the way, more on Click2Houston.com for our Newsmakers Extra. We're going to continue this conversation. Go to our Click2Houston.com under the news heading. Click on Newsmakers. Just ahead, the changing face of the University of St. Thomas and the president who's leading the change. Next. KPRC keeps a children's programming report that is filed quarterly with the Federal Communications Commission. It can be viewed at stations.fcc.gov. A copy may also be obtained from the FCC at 445 12th Street Southwest, Washington, D.C. 20554. www.fcc.gov. A little bird told me that you have fast internet and now the best mobile network, too? Yeah, and get them together and save hundreds on your wireless bill. Wow, that's great. Oh, and this looks great. Are these words for sale? No. <laughs> now you can get fast, reliable internet and save hundreds on your wireless bill. That simple, easy, awesome. Taxi! Should I stop her? Get started with a limited time offer on Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months. Plus, ask how to get $250 back when you switch to Xfinity Mobile. Your summer starts here. Time to hit the road with a great deal on a new Toyota. And who knows what fun treats you'll find along the way. Like barbecue, lobster, beignets, street tacos. Mmm, what is lengua? It's strong. Oh. During the Summer Starts Here sales event, get $2,500 customer cash or qualified buyers get 0% APR financing for 60 months on a sophisticated new 2019 Highlander. Get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Nobody does a Memorial Day sale better than exclusive furniture, and it doesn't get any better than 0% interest for 72 months. That's six full years, no interest until 2025. Low, low holiday prices on furniture and mattresses store-wide. Plus, get it all with 0% interest for 72 months or get an extra 10% off. But hurry, this sale absolutely ends Memorial Day Monday. Exclusive furniture where low prices live. Happy 70th anniversary, KPRC. Thank you for being Houston's home for NBC Nightly News. And welcome back to Houston Newsmakers. I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Richard Ludwig, president of St. Thomas University. Good morning. You've been on the job now for a couple of years. How's it going? Good morning. It's terrific. Yes. This process, this university, what is it about the University of St. Thomas that makes it so special? Well, you know, I, I, I have experienced it to be a warm and welcoming place that has a unique combination of, of reflecting the great diversity of this, this wonderful Houston metro area and marrying that with a, with a terrific patrimony of an intellectual tradition that goes back 2,000 years and, and then wrapping that all around a way that moves clearly into the future with some bold and exciting moves. So we're, I, I couldn't be more pleased to be there. What, what's going on right now um, that you are most proud of 
that's been going on now in the last couple of years since you've been there? Well, you know, the, the nice thing for me is that because the community is so welcoming, they have coalesced around a vision that they themselves have crafted called the Call Toward Tomorrow, mm -hmm. and that calls for a significant increase in enrollment and the impact that the university has for the city of Houston and far beyond. You know, one of the things we're looking at is how to expand the reach of the campus, the impact that our students make on the lives of people around them, and that potential is really what's exciting people. I was, I noticed uh, recently that you, the announcement was on the plans to go to Conroe. This is a picture, of ah, a, yes. a, a drawing of a proposed um, new campus university up there. Talk about how that plan came about, um, the land it'll be built on, mm -hmm. and um, how this campus fits into your strategic plan going forward. Well, great. Thank you for that. It's, it's um, garnered a lot of energy, and I think rightfully so. You know, our, our plan, the call toward tomorrow, calls for us to increase both our footprint and the number of students that we have. Um, the, the great folks of Conroe came to us and they said, hey, we would like to have you consider us. And we said, well, this matches with what our plans are, so let's take a look at that. Mm -hmm. And so the, the land that we're looking at for that picture that you just saw was for the Dyson Technology Park in Conroe. Mm -hmm. We're also looking at how we might integrate with the, sort of the downtown of Conroe and then even over toward the um, interstate mm -hmm. too. So there are lots of different areas that we're looking at, but really it is to build a campus in Conroe and to do it with new kinds of programs and in new ways that fit the needs of the community and also sort of the traditions of the university. We think that's a good blending of the old and the very new. When you talk about the traditions of a university, how important is it to have a university, higher level, higher education, mm -hmm. mixed with religion? I mean, that seems to be, when you think of St. Thomas University, you think right. about the religious foundations and higher education. What's the value sure. of having that going on at the same time? Well, you know, People in higher education love to talk about academic freedom, and, and that's fine in many instances, uh, but it only goes so far. Without the ability to delve into faith and questions of, of what belief structures are as, a, as an institution that is Catholic or any other faith-based institution, you really have a, a missing segment in that intellectual richness, and so for us, that blends the belief structures of many people, and certainly in our tradition is the Catholic tradition, but it allows us a certain freedom that you don't find in every educational institution. Do you find that in this day and time that that kind of environment where you have that kind of uh, freedom to have the thought about mm -hmm. what's going on, that it makes it a much more vibrant and a much more uh, rich learning environment as a result? You know, it, it is so rich because of that freedom. And uh, at one story I'll just tell you, as I was a candidate for this job, one of the students that I met with <clears throat> was uh, not from the Catholic tradition. And she said, you know, one of the things that I love so much about St. Thomas is that I can just be myself here. I can be free to be who I am and to explore the richness of my field and, and how that fits into the world. And that's what we crave for. You know, the, the tr rich tradition of the Catholic intellectual tradition mm -hmm. is one that is fearless in its quest for knowledge and how that applies to help real people do real things. It seems to me that the footprint of where your campus is now, mm -hmm. Is that going to be smaller than what the Conroe campus would be? <laughs> well, uh, it, we think so, probably. You know, one of the things that I shared uh, recently um, with the community was uh, we were just recently offered uh, a gift of land in Conroe from one of our uh, long-standing alumni. And, and I superimposed, or we superimposed, the current footprint of the university on that, and it would more than triple the actual wow. geographic footprint. So that, that's kind of an exciting concept. It's Certainly. Our, our Montrose campus is um, it's a gem for the city and for the university. It's an award-winning architectural style and has such a, a vibrancy within that fabric of Montrose and those neighborhoods around there. So it's one of those things that we'll continue to nurture and, and is, a, I think, a real opportunity for people to study. What do you tell a student who's thinking about going to college and you want to give a pitch for St. Thomas? Uh, I say, well, if you want to really discover who you are, what those gifts inside you have the potential to be, we'll help you bring those 
to life so that you can share them with the world. That's, that's our promise. That's what Be Your Bold Self is all about. You know what? If I could just knock off about 50 years, I'd consider coming back. <laughs> well, we welcome you and we welcome anyone because we, we have students from all walks of life. I don't want to bring down the cumulative average, <laughs> Dr. Sure. Love, but thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations on what's going on. We oh. look forward to the building going on up Thank there. you very much. We're excited about it. Thank you so much for being thank here. You. Hey, coming back, we're going to talk about next week, coming up in the month of June, how we're impacted next week. We'll do that right after this break. So Mike doesn't eat red meat. Correct. And Cindy's keto now. I thought she was paleo. That was last month. Also, Janet, the pescatarian, huh? fish only, is bringing her new boyfriend who apparently doesn't eat white sauces. And they're arriving at 7. When life gets crazy, okay. keep it simple. Choose from hundreds of delicious chef-inspired meals in minutes with Meal Simple from H-E-B. Oh, you all go ahead and eat. I have to wait 12 more minutes. Intermittent fasting. Oh. Glad you're back. How are you feeling? Exhausted. But finally being able to make that volunteer trip happen was awesome. Awesome. You have to what are they, they rob. <laughs> Let's do it every year. We'll do it every year. I thought you'd say that. Let's do it. See how investing with a J.P. Morgan advisor can help you. Visit your local Chase branch. This tradition definitely started with the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich. Me and my friends always went to Whataburger. We started putting out flyers saying Whataburger Social, and it just started becoming a big thing. I'm all about the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich. It's got that barbecue flavor, the cheese melts on top. It's my go-to sandwich. My best memory was trying to get everybody in the pictures. One week it was 8, 15, 24. We got up to 65 people. This tradition's all about good food, fun, and honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich. Did you know drowning is the second leading cause of death in children in Texas? Let's stop this from happening. Help KPRC2 and the YMCA of Greater Houston save lives. Join us for a free swim safety event on Saturday, June 8th. For more info, visit clicktohouston.com slash community. Brought to you in partnership with Shipley Donuts and Splashway Water Park. We have to step away next week for French Open tennis, but we'll be back stronger than ever the following weeks of June when we'll have a special look at flooding concerns as a part of our hurricane season focus. The Houston area survey by Rice University's Kinder Institute of Urban Research and the race for Houston mayor gets more crowded. We'll be talking with some of the candidates vying for that job all ahead here on Houston Newsmakers, so I do hope that you'll join me. Thank you to Congressman Brady and President Ludwig for joining me this morning to see this week's Newsmakers Extra with Congressman Brady or this show or previous shows. Go to clicktohouston.com and under the news heading, click on Newsmakers. Have a great day. I'll see you back here on June 16th.